big conference, uh, global conference. Thank you so much for coming here. So uh, I'm here to uh, welcome our educational manager, Margetha uh, Thaisman. Please, please come. You please come at the stage, and she will tell you about the uh, OE conference global. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Hello, everyone. It's a huge room <laughs> for small me and not too many people. If you care to, to kind of uh, go together in, here in the middle, it's fine. Anything. Or you can just do as you, you want to. <laughs> OK, so I'm Margreta Tresma uh, from uh, the Norwegian Digital Learning Arena. Uh, and I am here to talk a bit about our projects with Sami uh, resources. Uh, but before I start, I have to, to uh, just mention that I stand here very conscious today, very aware that I am not a Sami person. I do not belong to the Sami population of Norway. Uh, so I'm talking about Sami resources and Sami conditions without being Sami, and that makes me join a very long Norwegian tradition that I'm not very proud of. Uh, so, so I'm very conscious of, of it, and I just, just have to say that I hope during the presentation that I will be able to, to show you that this is about inclusion, about empowerment, empowerment and about cap, uh, capacity building. Uh, so it's not about me knowing what's best for the Sami population. So that's really important for me to, to say something about, and especially with the start we had this morning. So, okay. Just a few words about where we are in the world. Uh, you see the map of the world up in the corner there, and then there's Norway in green. Uh, and then the larger map, you can see the uh, Sápmi, which is, Sápmi is the name of the Sámi country, which is the area that uh, traditionally has uh, been home to the Sámi population of the Nordic countries. So there are four countries with, with the Sámi, traditionally with the Sámi population. So that's Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. Of course, these days, Sami people live everywhere else as well. And there's, for instance, of course, a huge population in Oslo, the capital of Norway, uh, holds a lot of Sami people. Um, <clears throat> just, I'm just going to start with uh, a few facts, not too much, but just a few facts about the history and the conditions for the Sami population in, uh, in Norway. So, We've got uh, Sami parliaments in all the three Nordic countries. Uh, so there are some uh, degree of self-government for the Sami population. Of course, especially when it comes to Sami matters, um, Sami culture, Sami uh, traditional uh, uh, herding and other uh, Sami issues. Uh, so we opened our Sami parliament in 1989 in Norway, and then uh, Sweden and fin Finland followed after that. This is the Sami flag, very beautiful flag uh, for the whole of Sápmi. Um, and as you can see on the slide here, um, there are a lot of languages uh, in this small area, 10 or 11, depends on, your, on, your, on how you count. Um, but in Norway, there are five languages, and two of them are almost gone. So there are very few uh, speakers of those languages. But there are three official languages, which is Northern Sami, which is by far the largest one. And then it's um, uh, Southern Sami and Lule Sami. And all three languages are uh, in a crisis on the verge of extinction, but especially Southern Sami and Lule Sami, very small languages. Uh, but, but of course, there is a huge interest these days in revitalizing these languages and, and reclaiming them. Um, 
Sami children and youth have the right to uh, an education in Sami, uh, also delivered in Sami. Uh, but laws and rights are not the same as practice all the time. So uh, in areas where there are very few Sami pupils, it's hard to get uh, the Sami education to fit into the schedule. And it's also a very uh, large a problem that there are a shortage of teachers in, in Sami and Sami speaking teachers. So um, very often it's something that they do after school hours or before school hours, then they do their Sami uh, lessons. So of course that's not uh, optimal at all. Okay, um, this year in June, uh, the Norwegian uh, uh, report on truth and Recon reconciliation were presented to the Norwegian Parliament the 1st of June and it's a huge report and of course it's a sad story uh, about language loss, about traumas and shame of being Sami. So there was a policy, a very uh, conscious policy of Norwegianization for years, especially in the 19th and the 20th century, uh, where children were forced to, to go to school and forced to learn Norwegian and uh, denied practicing their own language at school and denied using it also through breaks and so on. And a lot of these schools were boarding schools uh, and they were not uh, allowed to use their Sami language uh, during I think, yeah, that was my mic. Um, okay, so uh, there is a lot of sad stories in this, this report, and uh, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't want you to go too far into this because it's not my case. But um, uh, so I'll just state them as, as facts that there are a very sad history here and a lot of wrongs to, to try to make right again. Um, the language loss and the trauma and the shame continued long after the uh, Norwegian government had abandoned the rules or the laws of Norwegianization. It's, it's a sad fact that when you change the laws, the practice still is ongoing out in the different counties and uh, societies in Norway. Uh, so as far as into the 70s, 1970s, 80s, this was still, still a practice, I'm afraid, even though the laws were abandoned uh, decades before. So small children would come into school knowing only Sami, being placed in a classroom where they didn't understand a thing of what was going on and being labeled as stupid because of it. Um, this led to uh, a lot of parents deciding not to teach their children Sami because they thought that Sami children would have an easier life if they didn't, if they only knew Norwegian. So a lot of language was lost that way and um, um, these days there is a lot of trauma in not knowing your own language. And and a lot of interest, of course, in revitalizing and reclaiming the, your own language. Uh, there, has, there is a huge difference between some very small core areas in Finnmark, up north in Norway. They have kind of done better for themselves. They have been left alone more, so there, there is a more vibrant and strong culture that has existed all through the period while in areas closer to Norwegian societies, it has been very hard. And, uh, and then there's, the story is quite different there with very few people left speaking the language and uh, uh, feeling Sami and identifying as Sami. Uh, but it is changing these days in a more positive direction. Okay. Uh, to the educational resources. And this is the Sami Parliament in Karasjok, very beautiful building. 
Uh, so the Sami parliament has got the responsibility of providing learning resources for uh, Sami children. Um, and money, there is a lot of money in the system. There is, money is not a problem. Uh, but a problem is there are so few teachers, Sami teachers, and so few people being able to do, to provide the material, to make the material and provide it. There is a very small publishing industry, uh, Sami publishing industry, and the Sami parliament wants to, to take care of the publishing industry, which is very understandable. So, so they want to give uh, the work with providing resources to this small industry, but, but there are too few people, so, so there is, uh, things are kind of queuing and projects are not being uh, uh, completed because of the lack of resources when it comes to people. Um, so the, that is the problem. When it comes to um, the counties of Norway, I can, get, I can go over to this, this picture then. This is Norway with the different country, counties. Um, they are responsible of providing, for providing the uh, education for upper secondary. And this is where my organization comes into the picture. So they have also got a responsibility for, for, these, uh, for, for pupils 16 to 18. So in the northernmost counties of Norway, of course, there will be Sami pupils 16 to 18. And then there is a responsibility in the counties for providing free learning material for them, as well as the Norwegian pupils in the same schools. So the counties and the Sami parliament then, then have some kind of joint responsibility here. And that is why NDLA, Norwegian Digital Learning Arena, uh, also can come into this uh, equation and uh, do some work on Sami resources if the counties want us, wants us to. Um, I'm just going to say a few words, speak a few words about the NDLA and the NDLA model, just to show you why this is a good idea, in my opinion, how we can work with Sami resources. So we are a large OER repository. We are, own, we are owned and financed by the counties of Norway. All counties are uh, joined in making this effort, except one county. Everyone else is, is uh, joining in. And so they um, uh, provide money for us to make learning resources, free open digital learning resources for uh, upper secondary pupils in Norway. And the way it works is that NDLA gets to uh, borrow teachers from different schools all over Norway that come into NDLA and make the resources and then go back to their schools. Or they have a part-time job with us for a while and still stay at their school and make resources. So that means that if you are a Sami teacher working at a school in Finnmark, um, an upper secondary school that is owned by fin Finnmark County, you can uh, come into NDLA and make resources, Sami resources for us if that is the wish of the counties that we should make some resources. Uh, so it's a system where you both get learning resources and you also get teachers uh, staying in their schools, making the resources, not leaving their work, not leaving their school. And that is of course an advantage in a situation where there are a few teachers, a few Sami teachers. Um, and it's also a way of uh, getting uh, new competency into schools how about how to make good learning resources. You come into our environment and learn how to make good resources there, and you go back to your school with the skills and can uh, share them with your colleagues. So you kind of, you can spend the same money twice, both on the resources and on the competency that the teachers get. Uh, so the key word here is collaboration. So it is co uh, collaboration between the counties and between NDLA and the different schools on how to make learning resources. So this is the main system 
that we work with. But it also means that there's a joint board from the counties deciding what subjects and what resources we should make, which I'll get back to a bit later. Okay, so I've told you about the shared responsibility for the resources, told you a bit about uh, Norwegian Digital Learning Arena and how it works. Um, and now I'm going to just tell you a bit about the small projects that we have been involved in concerning Sami resources the last few years. Um, in these projects, uh, we function first and foremost as kind of a publisher, an online publisher for the resources. So the teachers on different schools that are involved in these projects, they are more loosely connected to NDLA than what the ordinary teachers working for us are. And I'll tell you how that works as well. So they make the resources we publish. So it's kind of collaboration there. So the initiatives that we are working on has been made from the counties with the Sami population, not from the joint board of NDLA. So it's a bit on the side on what we do, the main thing on what we do. And we don't know if that will change. Hopefully it will change so it can be something that we do in our main workflow uh, as a consequence of the Truth and Reconciliation Report. We could hope that that would help and make everyone see that this would be a joint responsibility for all of Norway, not just the northernmost countries. Um, okay, so I'm just going to talk a bit about these projects. So Southern Sami as a foreign language, that is the oldest project that we have. Um, Southern Sami, I told you it's on the verge of extinction. So it's very few people speaking this language and very few people able to make resources. However, there is a center, a language and cultural center called AGG in Trøndelag in mid-Norway. And uh, Andy LA has been asked to collaborate with AGG to make resources and publish them. So money has been given from the Sami parliament to AGG and they have uh, a teachers at an upper secondary school nearby who has come in and made the resources in Southern Sami. Um, so the reason why this is a foreign language project is of course because this is, language is not, they haven't been born with the language, oops, sorry. They haven't been born with the language, they, they need to relearn their own language. So it's a foreign language to them when they start school. That is why it's a foreign language uh, course. Um, this has been a success uh, and uh, uh, the authorities want us to continue. So actually we are going a bit out of our own, our own area when it comes to ages and making uh, more resources for younger children in Southern Sami as a foreign language as well. Uh, so this is a bit special, but it's because they have seen that the workflow, the way this function will work. Now our resources, I had just have to, to say that one more time, they are open online for everyone to access. So of course that is also a big uh, asset when it comes to subjects like this, because grown-ups, adults, anyone who wants with an internet connection can access and learn Southern Sami from the resources if they want to. Any teacher, uh, teaching adults can use them any way they like. Then we've got a science subject project, which is quite new. It's been going on for two years, I think. Uh, and this is uh, a collaboration between us and another most uh, country in Norway. And they have been giving means to a school in Tromsø uh, and the teachers there have made resources in uh, science, Sami science. And Sami science is a subject that you can take if you, if you are a Sami. It's uh, the basic subjects in Norwegian schooling uh, have their own Sami curriculum. 
when it comes to science, it's quite the same. It's a few uh, competency aims that are uh, different from the Norwegian uh, curriculum, but most of it is the same. Uh, this, we are in the process of publishing this. We have published almost half the, all uh, the subject. A lot of resources has been published. Uh, but we see, we have learned a lot from this project and we see a lot of challenges. Uh, so, one challenge is that we are a very professional provider of learning resources with a very professional system and we're our own editing platform. So when teachers uh, are supposed to publish for us and they're not quite in the system, they have to spend time learning how to do all these things, all these uh, managing our systems, learning to use the systems, and it takes a lot of time for them that they they thought they could just come and, and, and write resources, make resources, and everything would kind of magically fall into place. But they have to learn the systems and they spend a lot of time on this. So it's a much slower and more demanding work than they thought it would be. Um, so if they were closely connected to us, they were kind of coming into our system, as most teachers are, it would be easier for them. But then again, there's time and there's money uh, for the schools to manage this. Uh, so this year, we are not finished, but this year the school could not put in more resources. So now we are left with trying to, to, to complete this, uh, uh, finding the means somewhere else. Uh, and it's also been mostly a translation project, and of course that's not quite good enough. We need to provide Sami context but then you need to get photos and you need to get films and it's a very costly pro uh, process. So um, I think we will manage, we'll take some time before we have a complete subject in science uh, for Sami children. Uh, but I think it holds, even though it's not good enough with the translation, I think, I think it holds value anyway to be able to come to school and read a subject in your own language. I think there, it holds value anyway, but it's not it could hold more value, just put it that way. Right. The last project is starting up these days, and it's Northern Sami as a foreign language. Um, so it's very similar to Southern Sami as a foreign language, and it's also a collaboration with the Troms and Finnmark County. And there's teachers and, at another school called North Troms that will make these resources. Uh, but again, we see that there is not, uh, there is some money. They've been given money from the county, but it's not enough to, to make a complete subject. We can see it already, that there is too little money. Um, so we will, um, for now, function more as advisors in how to make the resources, and then we hopefully we will be able to get money and publish these resources in the future. Um, the ideal thing would be with the Sami parliament giving the money to the county to make these resources, but then they need to collaborate. And I think that is quite new to them that they should collaborate, the counties and the Sami parliament to make resources. That is a quite new source to them. So, so it's, it's hard to navigate kind of, and, and talk to the right people and see if we can can get something going there, but we're not giving up. Okay, now I've got a slide on all the, <laughs> all the benefits of making OER and the NDLA model for the Sami resources. And I'm not going to read the whole slide, and you know a lot about OER here. Uh, and I've already mentioned some of these, but it's of course the, the open resources and the CC licensing makes it easy to adapt to any situation that the teachers are in. And I also uh, talked about how this system allows the teachers to stay in their work as teachers, which I think is hugely important when there is a teacher shortage, as I told you about. Um, also, I told you about the competency that this gives, this work gives the teachers so they can bring back to other colleagues and how to make good open resources. And also, of course, uh, the costs uh, of 
open online publishing where you don't need to provide uh, for so and so many pupils. It will, the cost stays the same uh, compared to ordinary publishing because this is a problem for the, for the publishing houses in Norway, of course. These, these, these subjects are not, um, they can't make money on these subjects. So they need uh, subsidies to, to make such uh, subjects. Uh, so, but that is not a problem for us. It's the same if there are a few people, pupils or many pupils, the same costs. So the key here is capacity, capacity building, I think. But this model allows capacity building in the communities, in the areas, uh, making resources, um, learning how to make good resources, staying at the schools, and uh, providing local context. So the Sami teachers will make the resources and we will just be kind of a, a publisher and a provider and a collaborator to make them good. Um, okay. Um, but there, as I told you, there are some challenges. It's time consuming to get into our systems and, uh, and learn how to, to navigate. And uh, there is also, as I said, a shortage of teachers. Um, and there is a problem of funding. And I said money is not an issue, but it, there is money in the system, but it's not in the right place. <laughs> the money is not kind of getting into to this kind of, of uh, uh, making of OERs for now. So would it be better to just to get, just make a, a, an arena where Sami teachers could upload their own material and, and share it there. We are going to make such an arena for, for teachers in Norway to share. Um, and not kind of relying on our more costly model with the quality, all the quality processes that we demand and that what makes it hard for the teachers to kind of get into the system. I'm not sure. Uh, I think, why shouldn't Sami resources be of the same quality as the Norwegian resources are on our website? Um, yeah. Um, if the, my wish is that all counties goes into this put, uh, and, and allows money for it so that we can use our, utilize our model to the fullest and we can um, have the teachers more closely into our organization while still staying at schools and, and it will be easier for them to make the resources. Um, so we could hope that that will happen. Uh, the Sami parliament are not convinced, we have meetings with them, they are not convinced that we are the solution at all. Uh, they want to uh, support the small Sami publishing industry as I, as I said. Uh, and they have also got um, issues with our being uh, uh, digital, all digital, uh, which they, they're not sure if that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so that is also an issue. So to finish off, um, what I've been trying to tell you about is that there is, I think this model that we have where the teachers can stay at the school and make the resources and we can kind of provide uh, our workflow, our quality workflow and, and, and get it out there and it's open to everyone and it's CC license. I think it's a good model uh, for Sami resources and there's a huge need of them. Um, but there are some issues with, I would say that the money is not <laughs> in our kind of lane, it's on, in the Sami parliament. Uh, and it's also a question of all counties going all in and not just leaving it to the northern counties to take responsibility for, for it, uh, I think. So for now, we have to kind of work with our, our issues uh, and, and take the time it takes with little money and loose connections to these schools and these teachers. Um, but we get something done, and I think it's, it's okay. I, I think it's, it's good that we can have these projects and, and, and work with them, but we, I would like to do more. <laughs> I, would like, I, I would like us to do more. Um, 
but we have our we have our challenges. Yeah, that was it, really. So I would like, like to get some feedback or some response or some advice or whatever. You could talk to me during breaks if you like. If you have, if you have anything you would ask me or anything, any advice for us, it would be really, uh, really welcomed. So is there, I can't see, this, this is just the spotlights uh, blinding me. So I can't see you at all. I feel like, a, yeah, not like a teacher. <laughs> Some kind of <laughs> up here in the spotlight is not where I usually are. But can, is there anybody who wants to say something or ask me something, a comment? Yeah. Connie. Yes. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. And um, I know that your uh, truth and reconciliation report is still very new. Uh, in Canada, with our truth and reconciliation report, we had calls to action. There were 96 calls to action. And those calls to action are to help everyone work on making the promises, the potential of what truth and reconciliation can bring. And I believe there's nine calls to action that, yeah. There's nine calls to action for the truth and reconciliation here in Canada related to education. Mm. There's 96 altogether, so there's mm. many, many parts. Um, but in that, in those nine related to education, they're quite specific about certain things to have happen. And um, even this uh, recent visit to Canada by the Pope, uh, that was uh, one of the calls to action, was that you know, the Pope would come and um, apologize and, and make a better relationship with indigenous peoples. And I mean, it, it's a very uh, complicated thing, but he did come and there was, you know, a, an apology. So it's part of that working together in our present, living with the past. So do you have any calls to action and if so, would those be a way for uh, those other counties to perhaps recognize that they have responsibility to live up to those calls to action? Uh, what is the case right now is that the report has been handed to the parliament and they are working with it now. So, and there's a lot of suggestions uh, towards the end of the report or what could be done and what should be done. So we just have to wait for to the parliament to decide if there, what will come into that, those type of actions. Um, so I hope, hopefully we will have them because the report just mentions uh, education, of course, and, and, and resources as well, but we'll see. Uh, a very sad thing that happened this year was also that the same day as the report was, was handed over, uh, the part Norwegian Parliament uh, uh, ratified a new educational law uh, and the Sami population wanted the right to the learning material to be in that law, but they wouldn't take it in. And that was ratified the same day as the report was, was handed into the Parliament. So, very sad and of course it's it's something about oh, well this will be very costly if we are going to do this if this is a law then we it's probably some kind of consideration that but it was it was a, it's quite an, a, a paradox that day really so so um, I don't know hopefully it will change okay Come and talk to me if you have uh, something, uh, some advice for me, please. <laughs> Thank you.